everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm using one of my favorite mediums, but it's one of those that maybe doesn't get as much love as it should do, and that's Perfect Pearls. So today I have five different ways to use Perfect Pearls. Um, I could probably do 50 different ways because I really do love them. I've played with them for years. I mean, they've been around quite a long time now, um, but I feel like they're one of those things that are coming back again. And so I'm gonna show you my top five favorite ways to use them. Um, and then maybe if you love them as much as I do, we can do some more videos as well. But what we're gonna do is just start with the basics. So if you've never used them before, we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna move into more advanced techniques. So let's dive in. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to do this here. So these three cards use all five of my techniques. Um, and really this one is super, super simple. So all I did was take a piece of black cardstock and you can use anything really dark. You can also use light cardstock, but we'll get to that in a second when we get to the pearls. So for this one, I chose black and I used the uh, Letter It stamp set. Now this is from Ranger and they have a whole range of Ranger stamp sets um, from different designers, but there's also these ones in the Letter It collection and these are perfect to go with perfect pearls. So I'm just gonna center it up in my stamp platform and we are going to use Perfect Medium. Now, Perfect Medium, let's talk a little bit. So Perfect Pearls come in packs. Um, I just put all of mine in one of these clear cases like this, they fit perfectly. And also in here fits my medium. So when you buy Perfect Pearls, it comes with these little medium pads like this. This one's a little bit tatty because it is very well loved. Um, but when they are new, I don't think I've used either of these ones over here. Um, and they stack together. You can see this is how they arrive. So this is a special glue medium. Now you can use a clear mark or a glue base pad. But if you have perfect medium, which they give you with perfect pearls, then you can absolutely, you know, I recommend you use the correct substrate. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp as normal. And as I said, they come in four packs. You can also get individual colors. I'm gonna add links below. And if you're a Hedgehog Color Perks member, Ranger always gives us an awesome coupon code. So you'll want to make sure you're signed up to stock up on your perfect pearls. And of course, all those amazing Tim Holtz releases we have coming out as well. Um, and then I'm gonna stamp this one more time. You can kind of see if you move this around a little bit of shimmer to it so you can see where you're um, maybe missing something. So. I'm just gonna ink these up. And again, I'm just gonna give it a really good press down. And I can see I've got a good impression. So that's literally all you need is that like gluey impression. You can see there it just shimmers just a little bit. Okay. Now, this is how easy Perfect Pearls are, but yet how effective they are. You can pick any color, and in the others I'm gonna do combinations of colors, but for this we're gonna pick one color. So on this one, I did the silver. I think I'm actually gonna try out this iridescent white. Um, and one thing is the Perfect Pearls come with brushes, or you can get specialist mica brushes, any one of those will work. But you want something that never gets wet, because as soon as it gets wet, um, that's a whole different thing. It's a fun thing, but it's a whole different thing. You won't get the same effect. So I just literally touch my brush in and I start brushing around. And you'll notice I didn't put like any anti-static down or anything like that. And I like working with a little bit of Perfect Pearl. You can still, you know, brush it back in again if you want to, you can brush it back in the container. But in general, what you're gonna get is something like this. And you're gonna say, well, Alex, yeah, okay, that's great, but it's really smeary. Well, we're gonna fix that. So the first thing is any major excess goes back in here. And you can either use a large paintbrush or something like a surface sweep is perfect for this. And I literally just give it a really good going over. And you see what it's done is it's only stuck to the areas down there where there was medium. I may have had a smear or two down here. So anything that's moist, it's gonna stick to. But a sand eraser or something like that will get off any excess. Okay, so there's tip number one. Now, the next thing you need to think about is the fact that if you take this, and if I swiped my finger across this, like this, you see how it gets really light again? So I've gone from like a really nice solid image to something much lighter. It's because it's not sealed. So you need to seal your perfect pearls. And you can use a sealant, but I have a great hack for you. It's called water. Um, you literally just spritz it over. It will mix with your perfect pearls. And then all you have to do is dry it, just like this, and your perfect pearls will be set. That's how easy it is. 
And you don't necessarily have to do quite as much as I did. Like a reasonable mist, you don't want it to be too little, but you know, too much isn't an issue because you can just dry it off too. So we're just gonna go over it. You can also spritz paper and then add perfect pearls over it. Um, and you'll get some really cool techniques. Of course, it'll look like splatters over it. That's another cool technique you can do. Um, but water is the best kept secret in sealing perfect pearls. Um, you can mix perfect pearl with water and make paint. Do not do it anywhere near the pot. Do not do it with your special paint brushes that you're keeping dry. But if you do do it, it's a really cool technique. Um, but we can save that for our 45 other ways to use perfect pearls. So I'm just drying this out. You notice how it curved up one way? But if you start drying the reverse side, you're gonna notice it starts react relaxing. So you see how if you heat one side, it goes up. And then when it reaches kind of its peak, it will then start going back the other way. Now, if your cardstock ends up too ripply, and you're like, oh, I've already got ripply cardstock, I don't know what to do, then just run it through your die cutting machine with no dies, just with your plates in, and it'll come out perfectly. I'm doing this just off to the side because there's no moisture on that side, and it will help it straighten out, she hopes. So, there we go. It's so, yeah, still a little bit curly. This one I probably would put through my die cutting machine before I used it. But the next tip I wanna share with you is another cool one. So we're gonna go back to our perfect medium. And I have a blending tool that's just for that. I keep it in here. Um, or you can use one of your Ranger ones. I just happen to have this in my drawer. We use our Ranger one. Um, but literally just dab it in the perfect medium. And then you can just do the edges. So I'm literally just picking up the edges, as though you are like inking the edge of your cardstock. Or if you want to, depending on what you're doing, you can do the whole, the blending the edge. And what that means is we can now put perfect pearls on the edge of our cardstock. So I can take maybe some silver. And I just clean off my brush on my apron. And so that's my flipped corner. This is my blended corner. Take my surface sweep. And then you again, you could seal it, but you see how I can get those two different effects on the edges. And that's exactly how I did it on this card. I stamped out my huge celebration. I mounted it on some red frosted cardstock. And then I did a little fun background underneath and added some stickles on top and some diamantes. So really easy, but really, really effective. Okay, so there's two ways to use Perfect Pearls. Well, maybe a few more mixed in. But next up, I wanted to tell you about how you can take that to the next level. So what we can do is we can layer. So I'm gonna take out this one. I love this background stamp. This is actually um, one of my designs. It's a watercolor concept, but it's super cool. But we're gonna use it just as a solid shape for this project. Again, take out your stamp platform and add in some cardstock. I'm using black again, but you could use navy. You can use really any color you want. Just depends on the effect and how you want it to come out. The colors will come out different on light cardstocks than they do on dark cardstocks. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab more perfect medium. And again, ink up my stamp. Just as normal, nothing special. Okay. We're gonna do this. Give it a good pressing. And just need a little bit more. Always remember when you're inking up your stamp, it's mirrored when you go to ink it. If you think there's an area missing, I always forget that. So when you have done that, you'll be able to see like a little shimmery area of your stamp. It's harder to see on camera than it is in person. In person, you kind of definitely see that glossy piece. And what we're then gonna do, I hope that doesn't fall on the floor, is grab out a color. So I'm gonna go with that purple again because it is a really pretty color. And Again, just clean off my paintbrush on my apron. And that literally is enough to clean it off. You don't need to do anything special. And now I'm gonna go in and dab on my purple. See how easy it is to apply color to 
you know, we're all used to watercoloring and all these things that are really hard, well, not perfect pearls. And you really don't need much. I mean, I've dabbed my paintbrush in there twice and I pretty much have my whole area covered. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of polishing. And that's why I like these big fan brushes, so like a surface sweep. You see, it doesn't rub off your main area, it just rubs off the rest of your cardstock. So that's in there. Okay, so that's that. Now we want to set this because we want it to be nice and dry. So we're gonna give it a light spritz and we're gonna dry it off. Really easy. As I say, you can use a specialist like, you know, lacquer or something like that, or you can just do the cheats way and use water. And we all have water in spray bottles. So it's one of those perfect things. Now for this one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your cardstock is really dry because if you have any liquid on the top, it's not gonna work for this technique. So I'm gonna make sure I'm really nice and dry and thoroughly dry. And then I'm gonna grab back my stamp platform and stick this back down. And if you wonder what this is in here, it's sticky grid, which means I do not have to use magnets with my stamp platform. There is a whole tutorial on the channel. It's one of our most watched videos. It's on the homepage. Go check that out. So um, this is fine that it's coming up because it's nicely stuck on this side. So I'm gonna now grab this stamp set. I love this one too. It's called To The Moon and Back. And I sized it um, perfectly so it'll fit on here. And I did this because my Tilly, who's my youngest, her favorite thing are the moons. So she was so excited to have a moon stamp set. And the next step, step even, you can stamp with perfect medium, or again, you can stamp with like a Versamark, a Clearmark, a Ranger embossing ink, any of those. It really doesn't matter for this one. Um, I've got my Clearmark here, so that's what we're gonna do. But I'm just gonna ink up like this. And I'm gonna press accordingly. Make sure I've got a nice impression. It looks like it. Um, if I was doing it probably off camera, I might do it again, but it's gonna work fine. And then I'm gonna grab some embossing powder. I love this snowflake tinsel. This is one I bought at Christmas from Ranger. So I'm going to just sprinkle that on in my coffee filter. And what I'm gonna do just from the back is a really good flick. And I also still like to take my surface sweep. And sometimes what I do is I just kind of tap in there and sometimes I ruin it and sometimes I don't. And you can see you can emboss on top. Now ideally, if you're doing this at home, I really do suggest that you uh, do your perfect pearls, set them, and then leave it for a little while for it to dry it out. That's not quite so easy when I'm filming a video for you, but you can see it still works if you do it straight away. Um, it's just not as good of a result as we could get if we left it to dry and made sure that there was no static on there and no moisture. I can feel there's still a little bit of moisture in here, which is why I personally would prefer to leave it before I used it. But I'm gonna heat this up just so you can see the effect and then I'll show you the one I did in the craft room before so you can kind of see how that effect can go um, but i love the fact you can layer on here and still get all of these awesome effects okay so you see how cool it is and that's like fully embossed now and you've still got all that underneath this is the finished card that i did same color combo, and then I just put some purple cardstock around it just to really offset it. So really easy technique, but there is another way to use your Perfect Pearls. But of course, you know I'm not done because I said we had five. Well, this card uses another two techniques. I'm gonna leave that stamp in because we're gonna use that one again. So this is the one, I love this. Look how cool that is. So it's way easier than you think it's gonna be. Take a piece of cardstock and a stencil. This is a uh, Brutus Monroe stencil. They're like basic shapes. They're great for what we're gonna do here. And center it up wherever you want it on your card. If you want to tape it down, tape it down. If you don't, well, you don't have to. And then either take your blending tool. Now it depends on how gentle you wanna be, what effect you wanna get. There's lots of different variables and playing around with it, you'll see that. But you're just gonna take this and either blend your color in, or if you wanna go the quick route, 
you can literally just take your pad and fill in the stencil. I mean, look how easy this is. And I just want to make sure there is perfect medium all the way around. Like, so simple. I'm one of those people who like adds way more ink than I ever need. Okay, we're gonna go with that's probably okay. And for now I'm gonna put my lid on here. So I have that perfect circle covered in medium. And now we get to try out the mixed colors. So for this one, I use the blue, the gold, and I use a little bit of white. Now, of course, you could go with any color combination you want. The colors are not gonna mix together. They're gonna offset each other. So again, you don't really have to worry too much um, about mixing or mud making or any of those things. They're just gonna offset. So what I like to do is open them all up, which can be dangerous and clean this off. And I start with my lightest color and I just dab some around, just like that. Then I go to my mid color and I do that and then my darkest color and don't worry if you have empty spaces because you won't by the time you've finished. And this is why I only use a little bit because the colors are going to mix and yes you could keep them if you wanted to but there really isn't a need to. So now what I like to do is just kind of start blending them together so it covers my whole area. Now I'm gonna put my lids on because otherwise I will knock them everywhere because that's what I do. But this little pot is great that I store them in. It's a little art bin case. I'll link it in the description for you. But it's just the right size to store them all in. Okay, and now we're gonna take our surface sweep. I'm gonna make sure I uncover all of that magic. I mean, just look how pretty that is. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? Um, and then if you have any areas like this, you can fix them just with an eraser. So anything you have that you don't want, maybe you ended up with some medium outside your stencil. You can see, look, I've just taken an eraser, go around and everything disappears. So easy. So also really easy to fix mistakes, which I love. Okay. Now do not seal this one yet because otherwise this won't work. This is how we're gonna get a really cool effect on here. So we're gonna stick this back into our stamp platform. We're gonna grab our stamp. It does not have to be clean. And we're going to layer this roughly where we want it. Yeah. And you're gonna see some of the magic because it already has the ink on it. Um, so you can see what we're gonna do is pull back some of the perfect pearls. So I'm just gonna ink this up with perfect medium. Again, you can use another glue ink, but perfect medium just works so well. Take it, give it a really nice press. Look at that, isn't that just gorgeous? And now I go and set that. Now I spritz that with water, I set it, and I make it into my card. So we can go from this, and set it and then you can go into this here. So let's just recap those five different ways to use um, perfect pearls. So you can stamp out with your medium and just put it on any stamp. You can put it on a blending tool and do some cool techniques. Anything you can blend with, you can do your perfect pearls with. Um, you can stamp a background and then stamp over the top of it. So you can perfect pearl something and then stamp over the top with embossing um, ink. I would use archival if you're gonna use anything else. Um, and remember that top tip of setting it with this and do not let your brushes get wet. And then the other option is we can put that ink through a stencil and then add our perfect pearls and mix colors. I mean, like so many, this is way more than just five ways. Um, and then you can take your perfect medium and lift up color as well. So you can go back and add these gorgeous shadows in. So I hope you enjoyed our five plus ways to use Perfect Pals. Check out the links below. Everything's gonna be linked down there. 
And then also, of course, if you hit that join button, you'll get access to all of those extra coupon codes as well. So uh, there's a few in the description, but even more if you hit that join button, plus you get a birthday card. You might get one of these cards for your birthday in your mailbox. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, because I will be back tomorrow with another tip trick tutorial or maybe something a little bit different. I'm so excited to share all these things with you. Let me know what you think and let me know if you've tried Perfect Pearls or maybe you're gonna try them after this video. Happy crafting, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.